How's it guys? Thanks for joining me today on my YouTube video. I'm just going to be showing a little bit of behind the scenes of what I got up to on my trip to Namibia and going in pretty informally. I uh, just got a bunch of photos that I took and I want to talk a little bit about planning today with you and things I thought about before I went and took my photos and then in a future video I'll go on to a little bit more about how to actually edit the photos. So I just want to focus on planning behind the scenes had some great uh, content with help from Patrick, um, Anton and Cameron. I'll credit them at the end, but they did a lot of the behind the scenes footage of me walking through the quiver tree forests and what an amazing time spending five nights out in Namibia. So I'm going to delve right now in, show you a few photos, talk about a bit of tips and tricks uh, that I got up to and things you can think about when planning your own astrophotography mission, hopefully to remote places like the place I've been to. Okay, so I've just selected three or four photos here just to show you things that you need to think about before you go out. Um, what's really important and like you've seen now in my behind the scenes video is actually going out and scouting the area so that you can find the compositions before it gets dark. Very, very difficult to find compositions in the dark. Not impossible, but it is a lot harder to do it. So better to go out in the day, early afternoon, before it gets dark. Go and find those compositions, use tools uh, such as photo pools to visualize where the Milky Way will, will be positioned in the evening. And with this, you can find some great compositions beforehand, mark them out, put a GPS locator, put some rocks in the road, whatever works for you so that you can go and find those places again. Now, if you look at this first place that I'm showing you over here, there's uh, two quiver trees in the middle. Um, and a few at the back and I really like the way that these two quiver trees broke the horizon. Um, I added in the element of a person standing holding a torchlight because I think this just really added to that exploring the night sky remote region, really added to the photo. And if we just quickly just boost up some settings here, just to give you a good idea of of what the scene actually looks like just by tweaking very very few settings you can quickly see how impactful just having a human element in your image can be there we go that's all I've done I haven't done really much um, I'll be doing another video on editing um, I'm just quickly ticking through a couple settings just to show you how impactful having another having a person in your image can be and this is something that you can plan for you can place the person and you can see now having these quiver trees without a person was a great photo but having that person standing there with the light just takes it to the next level and obviously positioning the Milky Way in the right place behind the quiver trees um, is very helpful. So that's just one element of, of planning that you can do. You can also take this completely to the next level like I did in this image over here. And I've lit up one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, roughly seven quiver trees. The hardest thing with this in planning is trying to find seven quiver trees that break the horizon but also don't overlap. Um, planning them where they don't overlap is very difficult. Um, it took me quite a long time to to find these trees but once I did I knew what I wanted to do um, for lighting I used Phoenix lights for some of the lights I ran out of lights I didn't have seven lights to use so I used cell phone uh, 
low cell phones with their lights on pointed down at the ground just to soften it. And although you look at this immediately and it looks blown out, I assure you all that detail is there. If we pull down the highlights, pull up some of the shadows, and now we can boost that exposure. Put a contrast in there. Maybe make it slightly cooler to get rid of all of that yellow in the foreground. Maybe a little bit of purple, maybe it's a bit too much. Something like that. And then just reduce the texture a bit for the sky and a little bit of clarity for the foreground. We can boost those shadows a little bit more. But look at that, just a few little quick tweaks and look at how that light painting uh, made such a big difference in terms of, of adding uh, to this image. But the main thing was pre-scouting, going and finding the trees, the trees that I needed, that didn't overlap, that broke the horizon. And that is the most important part of of my astrophotography is making sure you can find those compositions before otherwise you're just shooting a single tree in the dark you've got overlapping they're not breaking the horizon um, and your photos just aren't going to be at that next level so scouting making sure that your composition for your foreground is great and lines up with the Milky Way very very important um, another thing I just want to touch on quickly is if you want to see more detail in your foreground um, it's good to shoot two photos one for the sky which I did over here and this I shot at show you on the screen 20 seconds f2.8 ISO 3200 with my 14 mil and we're just going to edit this just for the sky now quickly and just bring up exposure contrast down this brighter highlights some of the shadows and then just soften the horizon a little bit of clarity in there and we maybe make it a little bit cooler so something like that just look purely at the sky that's all we're focusing on and there's our sky and then I shot a much longer exposure for the foreground and this one did at 180 seconds ISO at 12.50, this is just to bring down that noise and get a lot more detail in my foreground. So in this one, we're just purely gonna look at the foreground and you can see if I bring it up, don't worry about the sky, we're gonna blend it with the other photo. Bring up all those shadows. And a little bit of contrast. And look at that, all that detail in our foreground perfect for blending with the other photo. We have all that detail in the quiver trees, all that detail in our ground. There's a little bit of noise, but that's fine. We can reduce that later. And I might just cool that down a little bit so it looks like it's nighttime. And there's our foreground. So we have our foreground photo and we have our sky image. And we just blend those two together. So that's a, a nice little trick to shoot two images like that if you want to um, have a lot of detail in your foreground and then you just blend the sky in and now you've got this lovely image with all this detail and you didn't need to light paint. Light painting works very well if you want to highlight certain elements um, such as these quiver trees in this photo over here that I showed you earlier. However, if you have a lot of foreground and you light paint and you want to pick out all the detail in these rocks it can just look like you just shone a torch onto the landscape and doesn't look great so sometimes going for this method where you're doing a long exposure for the foreground is the way to go <clears throat> and the last video i want to share the photo i want to share with you is this one over here this we travel to a different area and instead of shooting the quiver trees we're now shooting the camel thorn trees and the camel thorn trees are beautiful. They're the trees that you find in dead flay. Um, but when they have leaves on, they make these beautiful shapes um, that can really complement an uh, astrophotography image. And this one, I waited till the Milky Way was sitting right over the tree. So if I lighten that up, let's bring those highlights down and lift the shadows up. And now we can bring the exposure up again. Uh, what I really loved about this photo, if you're starting to see now in the foreground, is there's a road running past this tree. So the road is leading you straight past the tree. And now we can just cool it down a little bit. There we 
a little bit of a chancer in there. There we go, beautiful. And just lift a little bit more of those blacks, a little bit more contrast. Get a little bit of clarity. And I really love this image. You got the Milky Way spanning the whole sky, um, and I love that. And then you got this road leading past these trees and the tree in the distance pulling your eye through. So just think about different layers as well. Have this tree in the foreground with the road leading you through to that back tree and then having this beautiful Milky Way spanning across the sky. So these are just different examples of images that I scouted in the daytime. I planned these in the daytime. I went for a walk in the afternoon with photo pulls, looked around, planned the compositions. And these are just a few. I did many more compositions. But if you plan your compositions, write them down and say, okay, I want to shoot this photo here with light painting. I want to shoot this next composition with a long exposure foreground. Have your checklist of the photos you want to shoot. And what you find then is you get a lot more content out of an evening when shooting astrophotography. Instead of just shooting the same photo over and over again at slightly different angles, you actually are actively going to your next composition. And by doing this, you maximize the content that you create from a single evening and you put a lot of thought process into it so that the quality of your compositions are much better. So I'm just going to leave you now with little time lapses that I, I took as well while shooting out um, in the quiver tree forests and in the camel thorn trees. And I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, thank you for everyone who helped me with this. And, um, I'm going to be producing a lot more videos of behind the scenes of what we're doing. So if there's anything you want to know about, um, any tips or tricks when shooting seascapes or astrophotography, just pop it in the comment section below. And please subscribe to my channel. It all helps. Thank you so much, guys. Cheers.